Hey guys, TCG Ralts here, back with another video today here at the o new and official TCG Ralts table. I almost said branded, but we don't have a brand yet. Maybe when we get popular, pop, pop, popular enough, that can work at Nintendo. Anyways, I'm fat. I'm at the official TCG Ralts table. This will be the table you will see in most, if not all, of my videos from here on out. Or at least all my Pokemon trading card game ones. And just about all my real life ones, because I really like this table. There's a Ralt engraved in it. Anyways, so here I am with another deck profile, and the deck profile today is guess what? You can't guess, but you can from the title. It's Tauros Garb. Now, this deck is a little dirty, but I actually really like it, and it's really fun, so let's get right into it. So, first thing is... Two Tauros. Now, this is just the Tauros from Base Set Sun Moon. It's just a great early on attacker. I'm actually going to, for everything but the new set, I'm just going to assume you know what they do, especially stuff like Tauros. So, I'm actually 90% sure I can fit an entire deck here as well. So, I have. Hmm. There, let's just put that there. So Tauros just provides a great early game pressure, and Mad Bull actually can be good late game pressure, so... Not late game, but like mid game pressure to try and edge your way through this, so... If I if it seems like I'm actually going through this fast, it might be because I am, I don't know. I just don't want to drag on exactly like I am. So we got one Drampa. So this is actually replacing the third Tauros, so if you don't really want to run Drampa, or if there's not too much special energy in your... In your meta, well, you can kind of take a Drampa and add in a third Tauros, but for me, two, Tauro, two Tauros, one Drampa should be fine, because Dark Tina, actually I have no idea if Dark Tina is going to be a thing, but I feel like Yveltal is definitely going to be a thing in my area, so Drampa actually kind of helps by discarding those DCEs. So, here's the thing, Yveltal is going to be my Drampa, and Drampa kind of destroys this deck a little bit. Don't worry, I can discard energies good at that. It's kind of what this deck does, isn't it? It's a disruption deck, in a way. So awkward today. Guys, this is my awkward day of the week. Everyone has it, where it's like one day where they're really awkward, and they can't really do anything social. Yeah, today's that's my day for me right now. Maybe it's just because I'm tired. And I'm not weak. I'm not ready for the work we get ahead of us. Next up, we got three Garbodor. So this is actually the new Garbodor with Trash Lanch, or... Trash Avalanche, but it's supposed to be, but you know, they just say, you know what, Trash Avalanche, let's do this. So, what Garbodor does is 20 damage times you have item cards in your opponent's discard pile, that's overpowered. It really is. For one psychic energy, you can do 20 damage times you have item cards in your opponent's discard pile. It's a stupid late game attack, because that's exactly what this deck needed. I'm not actually being sarcastic, but let's have some serious talk here for a second. This deck really. It had its early to mid game right with Tauros. It just needed that late game finisher. Lugia helped it, but Lugia just didn't provide it enough. And that's why Garbodor is in this deck. So good. We also run one Garbotoxin Garbodor. Because, you know, abilities are still good. And then, we just run three Trubbish, and then one other Trubbish. It's kind of a weird lineup, but it's good. I like it. So basically, here what I really like. No idea what I'm going to do. Once, I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. So, this deck is really good because it just has a very simple Pokemon lineup and then two Shaman. That's it. That's Pokemon lineup. So basically, you have your early to mid game with Tauros and Drampa. Your late game is definitely Garb, and your early game is definitely Tauros. Your mid game can be some sort of combination of these over here. But in general, it's just a really fast, genuinely hard-hitting deck. This is essentially the new Haymaker. If you guys actually know that deck from base set, it's the new Haymaker now. So that goes more or less over here, I think. I may be doing this completely wrong and looking like an idiot, but hey, I'll take it. 
So we got four Professor Sycamores. This is uh, one of the most self-explanatory cards in this deck. So you know what? In fact, it's so because Sycamore is just in every deck. It's just so strong. And we got two N Great Disruption card and draw card. Lysander Great Disruption card and game winning. Lysander wins games, guys. And then one Team Flagrant. Team Flagrant is in this deck. I'm trying to get enthusiasm in my voice. It's really hard when you're tired, okay? It's really hard when you're tired. Okay, two Team Flagrant. Team Flagrant is an amazing card because it lets you discard an energy off your opponent's active Pokemon. This is amazing because your entire deck is kind of meant built around having some attackers that your opponent can't deal with, like Tauros in the early game. Your opponent's not really meant to be able to deal with Tauros. So one Kukui, this just helps your Tauros and your Garb and your Drampa just hit numbers that are better and more convenient. I think Kukui's one of those cards that's going to be used a lot more with like Rage or maybe a Mad Bull. When you have like 60 instead of that 70, you need to kill that Mega whatever, let's say. Or Sylveon GX. But, I don't need, in fact, you could probably take Kukui up for something. Anyway, Team Skull Grunt. Team Skull Grunt is an amazing card. It can discard energies both. It's like a Team Flare Grunt for before your opponent attaches the energies. Because it gets them out of their hand. It's an amazing card to just kind of fire off turn one if you have a Shaman in your hand. It's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. But, so is Team Flare Grunt if you're going second. So, yeah. But if you're going first, Team Skull Grunt. Oh, that could be so good. Especially in the mirror match. That could be like game defining. But guess what other card is game-defining if, you know, found in the correct scenario? Delinquent. This card can just drop your opponent's hand to zero, and they don't, can't really do anything. It also really helps you win the stadium war, so... Go ahead, run two stadiums and win every stadium war because of Delinquent. You're welcome. Then we got one Hexmaniac. Hexmaniac is just... Again, it's a really good card because it shuts off abilities. Now you might be thinking, Garbodor does that, like Garbotoxin Garbodor does that. But it is different because Garbodor is a stage one that we actually have to kind of float stone to and stuff. Instead of, you know, that's the thing with this Garbodor. You don't get this Garbodor out too much unless in decks that you really need it. Like a, maybe a Volcano where you don't really think you can afford the Chain Hex because you need to get Garbodor out as well. But Garbodor, you're spending time building this Garbodor, which doesn't take prizes. This Garbodor takes prizes and does a lot. That's why you run 3-1 and one and not like a 2-2. Two -two. I do not think a 2-2 two -two is right for this deck. Just saying. Then we got one Olympia. This is just in case of like some sort of special condition or something. But it's also because a lot of your Pokemon have really high retreat costs, so you're going to need to switch them out pretty fast. And a lot. Four versus Seekers. I'm getting off track with my enthusiasm. I need to... Imagine, like, having a doctor. Like, like a, like a, um... Like, you have to go over and just, like, yeah, I'm just having a lot, a lot, a hard time being enthusiastic today. I just, I just can't. And, like, almost like therapy for... It, I don't know. My mind is wandering. It's weird. My mind is a weird thing. In fact, it probably, I just realized that I think all these cards look like they're at an angle to you. I don't care. For Ultra Ball, this is your universal switch. Search lets you just get anything you want. And you know what? I mean, not necessarily anything, but any Pokemon you want. And any Pokemon is pretty good. This is why running just one Garbodor is okay, because you don't have to run out on drawing it, because generally you can just Ultra Ball whichever Garbodor you're, you need out. Quickly and boom, bada bing, bada boom, you're good. Four crushing hammer. This is some more disruption. As you can see, there's a lot of disruption and power in this deck. It's a really weird hybrid of that, which kind of like Haymaker was and Luxtron. So, I just actually think that this deck is really strong because it's fast, disruptive, consistent, and high, and high, and it has high damage. That's just about everything you want in a deck. All in this. But like you, but like with everything that does way too many things at once, it can't really do too many of those things really good. Except for, you know, speed, 
consistency, everything but disruption. Disruption is still kind of a side thing, but you still have a good disruption energy. Because you got your team flagrants, your crushing hammers, and your team skull run. Then you got like delinquent. So disruption is still definitely in this deck. It's just not as prominent prominent or like obvious as the power or the speed is. Three, a choice band, speaking of power and speed, does thirty damage. This allows your Pokemon to do 30 more damage to each of your opponent's GXs and EXs. This is super strong because we are in a GX slash EX field meta. Look at this deck. Its main attacker in the early slash mid game is Tauros and Drampa. Yeah, excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> I don't think I've had a more awkward cough in my life. Oh, that record's going to break pretty soon. If, not necessarily pretty soon, but just some point. We got three float stones. This is probably the ugliest three float stones in the deck. Just ever. Because the rest of the cards have pretty decent purple tintish printing, but like float stones I got lazy on them because I really didn't feel like printing them, okay? So we got three float stone floats again, float stones just a really strong card, especially because we all have a bunch of retreat costs. I say we all like we're all uh like, I'm part of this deck. It's, it's a, sure, it's a great attitude if you want to do some Yu-Gi-Oh! Heart of the Cards stuff, but, like, I don't think I want to do that. You know, becoming a Tauros does not sound very good. Or whatever is going on in this picture. So we got two Transmail. This, this helps you search out your item cards, but not only your items, but your trainers as well, hence the name Trainer's Mail. It's a play on words because, you know, it's the mail of a Pokemon trainer, but it gets you trainers. But, um, Crash. I lead a sad, sad life to the point where I'm, if I'm doing this. Uh, next up, let's just move on from consistency cards to Field Lower, another disruption card that literally every deck's gonna run at least one of now because it's that strong. Being able to discard two in any combinations of tools and special and tool and stadiums, special stadiums, just normal stadiums, is so strong it's actually going to be used in every deck. It's like when Versus Seeker was released, except for it's just not as strong. It's just strong. One Rescue Stretcher, this is kind of replacing Super Rod in a ton of decks. Because it can be super raw by shuffling in three Pokemon, but it can also just bring one Pokemon straight to your hand. So, I like the choice because it just... Because choice always makes cards flexible, and flexible cards generally tend to go in decks because they can fit in more scenarios and make the deck all around just better. Kind of like this versus like Super Rod or Buddy Buddy Rescue. Also, no one runs Buddy Buddy Rescue over Super Rod. Just saying... In fact, after that gets rescue stretcher gets released, Buddy Buddy Rescue will not do anything anymore. Will not be played. Enhanced Hammer. So again, here's the thing. I'm running Drampa and Enhanced Hammer. You can definitely take out Enhanced Hammer. I'm definitely considering taking out Enhanced Hammer for something. Maybe like a third Tauros. I think I'm going to actually put in Lugia. You know, once my friend actually gives it to me. And, but... So if you're really paranoid of special energies, though, but... So basically, you can run Drampa or Enhanced Hammer, depending on which one's, like, more... If special energies are, like, really scary, you run Drampa. If not, it's like, uh, let's just run Enhanced Hammer, because you never know. Worst comes to worst, I discard it with an Ultra Ball, and I don't have to discard a Garb or a Trubbish or something like that. Next up, we got two Parallel Cities, Parallel... Parallel City is, again, a, disrupt, a good disruption card that doesn't actually really affect this deck, like the resistance side, so you can limit your opponent's bench with no downfall. It's one of the reasons I love this deck. And then next up we got four double colorless. It powers up a lot of the deck, especially if you're adding stuff like Lucian and Tapu Lele. It powers those up, and then it powers your Tauros up, helps power your Drampa up. Then you might be thinking, what about the rest of Drampa and Garbodor? Well, that's why we run the comfortable four energy car energies. Man, this deck kind of fits pretty perfectly. I just, I need to see this on camera. I need to see how weird this looks on camera. That doesn't really look weird. I could probably move over a little bit. There you go, guys. That did nothing. 
I mean, it did something, but not much. So yeah, this is the deck. It's just a really fast, really powerful, really consistent, really disruptive deck. Not really, really disruptive, but it's a disruptive deck, right? You can you can tell from like the hammers, the grunts, the drampa. Even this garb is kind of disruptive. Even this one provides like a false item lock. It's all, it's all so good. I love this deck. I'm testing it for the new Guardians Rising. I ordered cards for this. This is definitely what I'm going to be playing when Guardians Rising comes out. Spoiler alert. And yeah, I hope to see you all next time in my video, and I completely skipped that wrong. Let's try that again. So guys, this has been the deck. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not going to say to leave a like or subscribe, because literally everyone does that, and you're not even going to remember if I did it or not. So you know what? I'm just going to take the chance and say, hope that you just think that I did remember, that you did think that I said that, because you know what? You don't remember, so you're just going to assume that I did. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I have been TCG Ralts, and I will see you all in the next video.